Hello everyone, hope you all are doing very well. It's Saturday, so it's the lightweight tech day and we are going to learn something very simple yet very useful. Most of us Python programmer, we use print time to time and log also. So what if, if there is a better option to not to use print and log and use something which is very sweet and very useful and it can extend the output which is coming out through the print even more extensible and even more useful. So I stumbled up upon this Python ice cream library just a few days back. I start using in my code and I found it immensely useful. Some of the features you are going to learn are very useful, like enable and disable. Everything is being printed, but if I do not want just a one line of code, everything disappeared. That's what I really enjoy with this library. Quite extensible. And if you are coding in Python several hours a day, that is the most used library for you. It could be. And if you are using Python several hours daily, I believe based on my experience, it could be a very useful tool in your toolbox. So I think that I have created enough excitement about this Python ice cream library. So let's get to see it is reality. So every Python programmer does use these either print or the log methods to debug their code. Everybody does. However, and now with the help from Python ice cream package, you do not really need to use the print. Instead, you could use the ice cream package to even have a better debugging. Mostly it's not installed everywhere. So we need to install it ice cream. So it installed version 2.1.3 and the release 2.1.3 is the latest one. So that so get started. So, you know, we say a equals 10 and then we say print a very common way to do it. And if you do not want to use print, your replacement is the ice cream. So from ice cream, import IC. Now you could say IC of A. That is really printing the A value of A. The next, if you say a method, add A comma B and return a plus B and you are going to say add. So if you say print add one three, you are getting four. However, if you take the same syntax and replace with the ice cream. So every time when you are going to apply the ice cream, remember you are always going to get the expression and its value versus when we are using the print, you only get the value. So always in your, it's very handy for you to get the expression back for the value you would want to print. Now I have created this code block. So here are three methods, first, second, third, and they return first, second, third. And I have created another function called foo. And it just takes a variable, sets something, and based on if it is value, it just prints something. So let's run this, let's run this. Now if we call foo, depending on your code execution, whether you're gonna get print this or print this, but if A is first, then execution order has been changed. So this is what you are getting to know which particular block of your code was executed. If we replace this whole method and we call it by using IC and remove everything from print and just call the IC and we are not passing any parameters here. And now our foo, we just call it foo IC. I want to keep this method. That's our foo IC. And if we call the foo IC, it shows that within this code block, because this is the IPython cell. So based on that, in the line number two, it prints. And in the line number five, it prints. If you will change this to rather than first, now you call it third here. If you change it, now its execution is the first IC and the line number eight IC. So here you would want to know that whether this happened or that happened and your results were very different because you do not know which line, which particular block of the code was executed. 
here IC is telling you exactly where the execution was so you can understand this whole code block. Now we take the same understanding and look into a Python file because most of the time your code is actually sitting into Python file not in Jupyter Notebook. Here I have a test file named IC test. We are importing the ice cream. Here is the first method, second method, third method. Here we have created the foo which is similar to previously created function in Jupyter Notebook cell and here is the foo IC. Let's perform the foo first. Save it. Run it. You are getting 0 and 2. Now if we take and perform the foo IC, now you are getting that in this given file the line number 28 had the execution and the line number 34 had the execution and it was at this given time. So you have a lot more information available by using the ice cream method rather than using the print. One more thing we can learn at same time that you could actually disable or enable. So if you, uh, you would want to disable all the ice cream results, you could say ice cream disable and by using this ice cream disable, if you run the same code, you will not see any output. Whenever you would want to enable, you could just say enable it and all the results are coming back to you. So this is one really very good way to write the code embedded with IC. However, at the very top when you are running, you can enable or disable. That's one really great things about using this ice cream. One another really great aspect of ice cream is that you do not really need to call the IC in every file. So for example, let me create the another file IC test2.py and here we are importing this method foo IC in here so from IC test import foo IC. Now we can call this foo IC here and let's comment this here and we are going to use the IC test2. So our code is working. Now we can say IC and we can use here and now we want to use IC but this code is not going to work because IC is not available and the solution is if we do not know that we need to import here but the simple solution is that we do not need to call the IC everywhere we don't need to import the IC everywhere because in print we do not import the print so in order to have the parity the simple option is that we could say from ice cream import install and what you do you actually just perform the install at the very top or the where your code starts you take the install and now your IC is actually working now so even we haven't imported the ice cream in test 2 however we are still ready to go and launch our IC so when we call IC we are calling this foo IC in the IC test however now we have full understanding is that this method is executed in the current file versus this particular method which was used is inside the IC was running in a different file so the file context is changed now let's look into the third part where we will learn how to config our output. IC dot configure output and our objective is that we want to prefix everywhere. So I would say that I want to set a prefix where it always say my, my code and that's the IC prefix. Now if you run this code everywhere using the prefix. If you do not want to set up the prefix a text you could want to use a timestamp or something you can define a method and that's your timestamp and you could actually use prefix as this now let's run the test 2 now you are getting a timestamp too so if you do not provide the prefix the default prefix is IC so you could replace this default prefix by using your configure output and by providing your own custom prefix there is another option for you to configure your output by adding an output function. For example, if you'd want to incorporate the logging option, so let's import the logging and we are creating a method called warn as and it is logging dot warning and whatever 
is being input it's render as a string out now in the IC we would want to config the output function and it is going to use this var now let's run the IC2 now you see here that it is still using our prefix but it's using the warning which is coming out from the logging and rest is the same there is no change so by adding the prefix in combination with output function now you have changed your logging details in your python code sometimes it is possible that you would want to handle the non-standard data types using a custom method and in order to handle that there is another config output option that is called the argument to string function argument to string function and you can pass your own method here so let's create another method to a string and we can pass the object so if is instance of the given object is the string return a string r with length of i by passing the object and the length of the object otherwise return of the object so that's the method and this to string method is going to be used as the argument to string function run the same code there is no change whatsoever however if we come here and we say that ic of 10 what's up now you could see that 10 was passed and the object which being passed in the ic knows that depending on this method which we have added to a string it will take that string get it length and it will return also it however if you do not provide you say ic x is equal to 20 ic of x run you are getting x is equal to 20 nothing so by adding the arg to instrument function extension to configure output you can actually extend the output of ic through a custom function and whatever you would want to perform this function you could extend here however if i will this value must be the string what if we take this value and we put 20 here now you see if the value is a string then we process it and we give the length back to it as here otherwise we return as it is the object there is one more configuration available in the config output and that is called the include context include context and let's set it true once we set it true let's make sure that this was our previous output now we run it again now if you see that the output value has been displayed little differently so by setting the include context for the ic we have even added more information such as the file name line number and the parent function to the ic output so here we are only printing this output however now we are actually printing even more that this particular code is coming out from the ic test 2 which was not listed here it was only available for the other files not the parent file but now it knows that is coming out from test 2 and the particular line number as well and if you would want to make it even more extendable you could actually use the absolute path context absolute path and true so by default these both values are false once you add the context absolute path true and if you run the same code now you are going to get the full path of the file it really adds up a lot more information however if that is what your objective is you could enable it or if by default it is disabled as you could see ice cream comes with a lot more configuration and some of these configurations which could extend your debugging and i would suggest you that if you haven't started using the ice cream with python it is your time enjoy ice cream so that's where i will leave you it's up to you whether you would want to use python ice cream library or not but i found myself it's really very very useful just by using in last few weeks i'm thankful for your time i do appreciate it and i'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video until then thank you so much